Hello everyone, welcome to Wicked West Books. My name is Meg West and today we are doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This tag was created back during 2016 and uh, it's something some YouTubers have been doing every single year. I did it the year it came out and haven't done it since. So I figured it's way past time since it can be a yearly thing to do. When you see me looking off camera into the distance, we got a kitten. Um, I have read 27 books so far this year. And by read, I mean started and finished. I am almost done with book 28. This is Kestrel. He's a good little kitty. He is a talking cat, so he might meow a lot through this video. So the first question is, what is the best books you've read this year so far? I don't really have an answer for it. I haven't I don't feel like I have read my favorite book of the year yet. I will take the book away. You don't need to chew on this. I feel like I will probably read a whole lot more and hopefully better books during the second half of the year. I don't think I've read this year's best book so far, so I don't really have an answer to this question. Question number two is what is the best sequel you've read so far this year? I have to go with the second book in the Innkeeper series by Alana Andrew, which is Sweep in Peace. This book series is one that I read after coming off of short stories, and I kind of expected it to be short stories even though I knew better, and I fell in love with the series and read all four books in a week. So I've read things so far this year. Question number three is what book are you looking forward to coming out this year? Favorite book coming out this year? That book will be Soul Taken by Patricia Briggs. <laughs> she is an author whose books I will read no matter what they are about. And then this one happens to be about a favorite psychotic sort <laughs> magician and vampire. This will be the 13th book in the uh, Mercy Thompson novels to come out uh, if you're following just Mercy and not doing the book series that goes alongside of it and this book comes out august 23rd so three days after my birthday and i am always always looking forward to the new patricia briggs books forever and always they're they're some of my favorites the next question is what is your most anticipated read of this year for the second half i have to go with our violent ends by chloe gong i'm almost done reading these Violet Delights, and I'm absolutely loving it, so uh, I would love to see how this semi-fantasy, urban fantasy, uh, Shanghai retelling of Romeo and Juliet ends. Uh, I think I know how it's going to end, um, but I don't actually know that it will end the way I think it will end, so we'll just have to kind of see where it goes. What is your biggest disappointment of this year? Uh, for me, that sadly was The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I don't know if it's just the time that I read it, if I wasn't in the mood for high fantasy with a lot of characters, but I had a lot of trouble keeping the characters separate in my head and just so much trouble being invested in anyone's story. Uh, about the time that I would start to get invested in a specific character, it would switch to someone else, and it always went like that. The second that I became interested, it went somewhere else instead of me being interested um, and wanting to know exactly what was happening in everyone's lives. It, it didn't work out that way, um, which is rather unfortunate because I think it's probably a book series I would like if I try it again later, but yeah, I've it should have been something directly up my alley, and it just wasn't. Let me know if he starts chewing on any of those. The next question is, what was your biggest surprise? And I've already actually mentioned it. It's These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. It's balancing on my flute case. That thing's a wiggling. You're not the best balancer. I mean, if you fall, it's like three inches. I'm not the biggest fan of Shakespeare. Uh, it started off almost copying the Shakespearean language, and that wasn't something I was actually in the mood for. Yes, I know, I picked up a Shakespearean retelling and then wasn't exactly happy when it seemed like Shakespeare. Um, but once I got into the story, I actually really liked all of the nods to Shakespeare that I can see. I'm sure there's more 
but I am very actually pleasantly surprised with it. So the next question is, what is a new favorite author? This kind of actually happened last year, um, but this year she became like my third auto buy author. I only automatically will buy and read three authors books and Delona Andres is one of them. They are a husband and wife duo who write books that are typically at let's not 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 the fairy lights. I know they're just so bouncy and they want to be played with. But let's not. I just I, I've loved everything they read so far. Their characters are three-dimensional. Um, they do typically have a cast that they write, and the cast seems to stay the same between the books, even if, I mean, like, the people are different, but there's always the um, out-of-the-box grandma character who is way more fun than pretty much anyone around her. Um, you've got the strong female character. Uh, the Innkeeper series did tone down that strong female a, li a little bit. Um, she's still very powerful in her own right, but there are very, very obvious and mentioned limits to her power uh, versus Kate Daniels, who just keeps pushing herself until she gets things done. But I, I'm loving them. I love the fact that they have romance, but they don't push the romance to happen too quickly if it doesn't need to happen too quickly. If in a book series, the first three books need to follow one romantic relationship and then you do one book for a different romantic relationship and so on. Um, he's crawled into my lap and is staying there. Um, then they do that and they don't force the relationships to happen too fast. They don't drag it on unnecessarily. If it makes sense in the book for them to be sleeping together at that point, that's when it will happen. And I really appreciate that. And then the writing style is just, it's right up my alley. Unique versions of urban fantasy um, in this Innkeeper series, werewolves and vampires are aliens and all of the lore is just stuff that humans came up to explain the alien life on the planet. It's, it's different while still being believable and the fact that they write off it together means that you never have to go with the most obvious way forward because there's someone else to bounce off ideas and I've really been enjoying that. The next question is, who is your newest fictional crush? Colivar is first introduced in A Feast of Souls by C.S. Friedman. I read this book years ago. Um, there will be a bookish background on this series coming up next in like a week or so. I really want to talk about this series. It's been a very, very important series to me and uh, I, I just, I need to share my thoughts on the overall trilogy. He popped up again in Wings of Wrath and I started to really care about him in the second book. And then in the third book, I went and fell in love with the man. I love him. I, I, I fell in love with him in this book. Like he is a new favorite of mine and I think he will stay there. So. Yeah, his name is Colliver. Uh, if you read this series at all, let me know because uh, no one reads this series. It's got like one review on YouTube. So if you've read the Magister's Trilogy, um, please let me know. We can be friends. Who is your newest favorite character? Oh, this is Arland. Mm -hmm. Arland the Marshal of House Krar. Uh, he is also in the Innkeeper series. I tried to spread out the answers, but it kept coming back to this series for me. And uh, Arland, yeah, the vampire character um, with long blonde hair and a ponytail. Uh, the werewolf ends up calling him Goldilocks, and he just rolls with it. And he has a crush on an earthling human woman and decided that the best way to do research on who this earthling human woman would pick in this uh, romantic triangle, uh, he read Twilight in which the vampires win. So sorry Anya for being a werewolf. They lose out in the romantic relationships. And uh, yeah, no, I love him. He's a very great combination of smart ass and kick ass and just fun and responsible and just all of all of the things in one. The next question is a book that made you cry. Um, there are exactly two books that have ever made me cry because very specific scenes in books are the ones that make me cry. They're the ones where usually uh, they're 
confronting someone about having been invisible and just please see me. Those are the scenes that make me cry. I don't cry too much at character deaths or character torture or anything like that, um, you know, like a normal reader. It's a very specific thing that happens in books that will make me cry and unfortunately um, that makes for a very tall order and books don't make me cry. Next is to name a book that made you happy. Um, my husband and I re- well, I reread Children of Amarid by David B. Coe, book one of the Lon Tobin Chronicles. Um, it is a trilogy. I've got the rest up on my shelf as well. Um, this is something that I- this is a trilogy that I read a long time ago. I've reread a couple times since. It's fantastic magic systems based on having a bird familiar, usually a hawk, sometimes an owl, and then on rare occasions an eagle and it was a buddy read that I picked to read with my husband this year so the fact that we both got to read this again this year me again him for the first time um it was a fun time it was a fun time the next question is the most beautiful book that you have obtained so far this year and for me that one has to be Igniting Darkness by Robin Lefevers this book um is the opposite in coloring of the first book in the series which is Courting Darkness and but that dagger on the cover with the details around it is one of my absolute favorite things. I think the first book is gorgeous and now that I have the second book in what is apparently a duology, I kind of learned that today, I thought it would be a trilogy. Um, it's just it's gorgeous and I need to read it because the first book left off in a cliffhanger and I was very unhappy that my library did not have a copy of book two but now I do so I don't need the library to have a copy so the next to last question is what books do you need to read this year so very high on my list is of course is Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong I just I want to know how this trilogy or how this duology finishes out. Another one on my list is The Burning God by R.F. Kuang because I read The Poppy War and The Dragon Republic earlier this year and they were both very very good. It did get me really close to crying. Um, the amount of trauma in the books is, is, is high. <laughs> that is a very high level of trauma and uh, I'm afraid of the third book. I might there might be a make me cry scene in the third book. Uh, I will let you know if that does happen. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing the trilogy. I just am also terrified to finish the trilogy. Another one that is very high on my list and I currently have checked out from the library is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. Uh, it's dark academia. I know nothing else about it. I've seen lots and lots of hype um, on book internet about it so I am very very curious and also the cover for the book is absolutely gorgeous so if I end up loving it uh, I will be adding it to my shelves. And also something I have on my wi on my wish list from the library is Jade City. I just have heard really good things about it recently and so it's very high on my to-do list as far as books go. Very last question is shout out one of your favorite book content creators. And uh, I've been out of the loop for so long that I don't have anyone new or even remotely close to my size in mind uh, to shout out. But uh, I do want to take a second to say that I really con consistently admired Zoe's All Booked. She writes books, she has children, she's writing a story. I think her Twitter handle says she's in her second draft. And I just, I admire all the work that she puts into her content. So I'm going to go ahead and mention her, even if she absolutely does not need remotely a shout out from me. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There will be another bookish background as well as a readathon that I'm going to participate in August. So I have to put together a TBR for that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. And uh, if you want more kitten content, uh, follow me here. Um, I will probably be keeping this little guy by my side a whole lot. He kind of seems to like it there. And uh, I do too.
I will also probably end up posting pictures of Kestrel and Oscar uh, onto my Instagram. So if you want some kitty content, follow my Instagram from Kestrel and I. Have a wicked day.